Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hola, soy Brenda Romagnello, tu profesora de español. Hello and welcome to another Spanish class. Today we're going to have a look at the pronunciation of consonants in Spanish. And specifically today we're going to be comparing uh, the English language and the Spanish language uh, because that, uh, and we are going to talk about the most distinctive uh, consonants, the ones that are different, yes, and they're usually the ones that cause a little bit of problem for English speakers, for example, uh, when they speak Spanish because they are different and we pronounce them differently in Spanish. All the consonants basically are pretty much the same. We use them and we say exactly the same in English and in Spanish but we are going to have a look at some that are actually different in Spanish. We're going to start with B and B. B and B. Can you see here? So it doesn't matter if it is a B or a V, yeah, how we say it in, in English. In Spanish, it will always be either B, <laughs> will always be with a soft B. A soft B. Okay, so we don't differentiate in Spanish between B and V. Okay, let's have a look at some examples. Repeat after me. Bueno. Bueno. Barato. Barato. Vela. Vela. Viernes. Viernes. So I don't know if you have noticed, but uh, when Spanish speakers uh, speak English, that's why we say sometimes very good, very, very good. <laughs> because in Spanish, we don't have very, we don't use the V as that, like that. We don't pronounce the V like that. The next one is se, se. So this is the C in Spanish. So the C will have a different sound in Spanish depending on which vowel we have after the C. So for C-A-C-O-C-U in Spanish, the C is going to turn into a K sound. Yes, yeah? so we're going to say K-C-O-C-U. Repite. K-C-O-C-U. Por ejemplo, casa, como, cual, Okay, and if we have a CE or CI, we are going to say, uh, we are going to pronounce the C with an S sound. With an S sound. Por ejemplo, cerca, cielo. Cerca, cielo. So remember, we're going to say, ca, co, cu, se, si. And be careful if you are Italian or if you know a little bit of Italian, sometimes you, send, you tend to say che chi because that's how they, they pronounce it in, in, in Italian. So cochina, sometimes you tend to say cochina or things like that for cocina. Uh, we don't say like that. It's always se, um, like an S sound for se and si, cocina. The next one is cu, cu. So I know that we always say that we pronounce absolutely every letter in Spanish, but there is an exception. Uh, for example, when we have Q, U, E or Q, U, I in Spanish, it's not gonna, we're not going to pronounce the U in between. It's not going to be cue, cui. That's a mistake. Cue, cui. We say instead que, qui. Que, qui. Por ejemplo, repite después de mí. Repeat after me. Queso. Queso, quien, quien. It's incorrect to say queso and quien. <laughs> we have to say queso, quien. The next one is je, je. So first I'm telling you what is the, 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 the letter, how we say the letter in Spanish. Je is G, but we're going to have different pronunciations depending on, again, what vowel follows this letter. So, for example, if we have G A G O G U, we're going to say the G sound. Yes, G. For example, ga go gu, ga go gu. Por ejemplo, gato, 
gato, golf, golf, mucho gusto, gusto. See, so here is a g sound. But if we have ge or gi, then it's going to be like a soft H, yes, and actually in Spain and certain parts of, of Latin America, in certain countries, the H is a lot stronger than other countries, yes, so in this case it will be G I G E, G E would be G E, G E, G E, but in Spain it's really strong, it's actually something like G E, G E, G E, G E, but remember, yes, so if we have G E or G I, it's going to be G E, G E, por ejemplo, Gente, gente, gimnasio, gimnasio. And the other difference is if we have the G U E and G U I exactly the same as we were talking about the Q U E and Q U I, we're not going to pronounce that U in between. We're going to say G G. Yes, so this is so that we know how to pronounce how to say ge gi in Spanish because we know how to say ga go gu but then how do you say ge gi if you say g i and g e is he he well you put a u in between and that's how we say ge gi remember it's not going to be gue gui so we are going to say por ejemplo guerra guerra guitarra guitarra the next one is la J, la J, that's how we say J in Spanish, J, la J. So la J, it always has the very strong H sound, it's a, it's a little bit stronger than the H in Spanish, that's why I think Spanish speakers when we speak English we say house and how are you, no? <laughs> because for us the H is very strong, it's a lot stronger, there's a, a lot more um, air going through your throat when, when you say a G I G E and a, and a J, no, a J. So all the Js, all the vowels after a J will be uh, with a H sound. Por ejemplo, Japón, Japón. The next one is la H, the H. So I'm not sure if you have noticed this, but in Spanish, the H basically we write it in some words but it's never pronounced. The H in Spanish is silent. So be careful with this one because if you're an English uh, speaker, you tend to like pronounce it as a house or how are you and um, with a H sound. In Spanish, pretend is not there, okay? So we don't say hola, we say hola. We don't say hermano, we say hermano, okay? And sometimes it could be in the middle of a word. Por ejemplo, zanahoria, for carrot, zanahoria. So you can see it's in the middle of the word, but it's like it doesn't exist. So we only have to write it in Spanish. The only exception is, of course, if we have a CH, CH, CH. So if you have the C and the H together, it's the same as in English, it has a CH sound. Ch. Por ejemplo, repeat after me. Chao, chao, China, China. In this case, it will affect the, the pronunciation of a CH. You need to pronounce the H after a C. The next one is the double L. See, double L, double L, double L. There are many different ways to pronounce the double L. L in Spanish, yes, um, and there are different ways depending on what country uh, you are, but mostly, um, for example, where I'm from in Argentina, we have what we call Jismo, yes, which is basically to pronounce the double L and the Y exactly the same. And it's something like depending, and actually within Argentina, there are many different um, accents, yes, within one, one single country. And for example, in Buenos Aires, where you have the porteño accent, it's more of a sh sound. So we are going to say me llamo, Yes, me llamo for I am cold, me llamo or lluvia, see, ¿sí? lluvia. Uh, but where I'm from, from Cordoba, we have more of a, um, a softer 
uh, G, J, like that, and we say Juvia, Juvia, or Me llamo, Me llamo. But it depends in, in what country, in which Spanish country you are in, how they will pronounce the double L. So which variation should you choose? Well, it depends on your preference. Uh, for example, if you have a preference for, or you know someone, or you wish to travel to Mexico, or if you prefer Colombia, or Spain, España, Argentina, depending on what your preference is, maybe you want to pick that specific variation of um, the culture or country that you, you prefer the most. If not, maybe go with a general J, G. <laughs> yeah, so me llamo o me llamo. The next one is ñ, la ñ. La ñ is very distinctive of the Spanish language and it will be similar to that ñ, that ing sound that we have in English. Por ejemplo, mañana, mañana, baño, baño. Okay, uh, it's very important that you pronounce it. The next one, which we have already sort of touched upon, is uh, Y, yes? La Y, Y, which literally means the Greek I in Spanish. And like I was saying, for example, in, Span in Argentina, where I'm from, it's very common uh, in, in Buenos Aires to say yo, yes, or yerba for, um, you know, the specific um, Argentinian tea that we drink is called yerba and it has a Y, a Y, so that's why we say yerba. But I am from Cordoba and I think the Cordoba accent is a little bit more like a normal or neutral. Uh, they also use it like that in, in Colombia and other uh, parts of Latin America and it's more like yerba or yo. Yes, but it also, some people pronounce it as yo or hierba. The next one is, I'm sure your friend, if you have met before, if not, let me introduce you to la R or R. Yes, R or R. So this is the R. Okay, and this letter gives a little bit of a headache to most Spanish students because it's trilled. Yes, we have that trill sound. And if you think about it, it sounds like a Scottish R. So if you, have, if you want to think about a Scottish person, maybe um, you can see the, the, the R, how it's, it's done in Spanish. But um, it's not always trilled, okay? I'll show you how to trill it in a second. Um, so what you have to do is you, put a, you have to open your mouth. Yeah, it, the sound doesn't come through, uh, from your throat, it comes from your mouth, yes? From the tongue moving against the palate at the top and that's what pronounces the sound, not from a guttural or a, you know, like a throat uh, sound, as for example in French or other languages. Uh, okay, I'm, I don't speak French, so I'm just guessing that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's have a look at this one, yes? R look if I stop my, my tongue for a bit, I just the sound doesn't come out. So you need to let the the tongue be really soft, like tilt it against the palate like this, and let the air flow and do this motion against the palate. That's what creates a it's kind of like a purring, like a car a cat. Okay, okay, so it's important that you try it because sometimes you will change the meaning of a word and you will sound very natural if you actually even try to do it, even if you think that you can't pronounce it. Okay, so let's have a look when it's real and when it's not. It's not trilled, sorry, it is trilled. Let's start with the trilled uh, at the beginning of a word. For example, rápido, rápido, okay? Fast, rápido. And it's also trilled when you have it in a double R, doble R or doble R, okay? Por ejemplo, perro, perro, o carro, carro. You see, you have that double R in the middle of a word. But it's not trilled if it is uh, only one R in the middle of a word, for example, pero, pero, caro, caro. 
and it's not trill when it's at the end of a word. For example, amor, comer. Amor, comer. Okay? So if it is at the end of the word, not trilled. If it's only one R in the middle, not trilled. If it is one R at the beginning, trilled. Two double R's, two R's uh, in the middle, trilled. Okay? Uh, and look how important it is to pr try to, pr at least try to pronounce it because you are either saying dog or bad, yeah? Perro, pero, or you're saying car or, or, or expensive, yes? Carro, e uh, expensive. Carro o caro yes expensive so it is important um, of course the context will help you get your message across but it's uh, you will save the, the the Spanish speaker time of trying to figure out what you're trying to say if you just say it perfectly fine it will be way easier for you to be understood so even if you try and I know it's it's frustrating sometimes even if you go perro, perro, uh, Perro, right? If you try to make the emphasis, try to make an effort, it will still sound like you're trying to say dog and not uh, however. And the last one is zeta, zeta, the Z, zeta. So the Z in Spanish in Latin America, it sounds like an S, yes? Yeah? So I'm not, I'm not sure if you have noticed this, but for example, in Latin America for shoe, we say zapato, zapato. Okay, zapato. But in Spain, they they have it, they pronounce it differently and then the Z will be pronounced by putting your tongue in between uh, your teeth and it will sound something like, I'm not from Spain, so obviously, please give me, cut me some slack here. <laughs> but it's something like zapato, 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 okay? Uh, I know that they pronounce it as well when there is a C in the middle of a word, um, but that's a, that's a different, it's, it's not related to the Z here, yes? But that is the difference between the Z between Latin America and Spain. All right, just to summarize, let's just practice all the pronunciation of some words that we have learned. Repeat after me. Repite después de mí. Casa. Vela. Barato. Como? Cerca. Cielo. Queso. Quien? Gato. Golf. Gusto. Gente. Gimnasio. Guerra. Guitarra. Hola. Hermana. Me llamo. Mañana, yo, rápido, perro, pero, caro, comer, zapato. Muy bien, muchísimas gracias por ver la clase. Thank you very much for watching today's lesson and I will see you next class. Adiós. Hola, soy Brenda Romañelo, tu profesora de español. Hello and welcome to another Spanish class. Today we're going to um, have a, a, a class for beginners and we're going to learn how to say the days of the week in Spanish. We are going to start with the days of the week in Spanish and how we say the days of the week in Spanish. We say los días de la semana. Los días de la semana. So, días significa days y semana significa week. Okay, so we're going to have a look at los días de la semana. Repite después de mí. So, repeat after me. Lunes. 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 That's for Monday. Martes. 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 That's Tuesday. Miércoles. 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 I want you to pay attention that miércoles has that little written accent in the E. So that indicates to you where the stress of the word goes. So whenever you see that written accent, 
that is where it's telling you that you need to put the stress the emphasis of the word in that specific syllable so it's not miércoles yes is miércoles miércoles that's wednesday right jueves 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 thursday viernes 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 friday okay you might be asking and wondering you have a v for viernes right la v but i'm saying it as a soft b as if it was actually with a b instead of a v okay that's because the the b and the v in spanish they are exactly the same and they are both this very soft you only put your lips together and there's a very tiny little air flow uh, going through it to pronounce exactly the same so we basically pronounce v and v exactly the same as b okay so it's not viernes um it could be the case for example if you are spelling the word or if you say it very slowly then it will very likely be uh, viernes but spanish speakers when we say it naturally and in in a in a conversation or just in speech it will be very fast and very soft it will be viernes viernes okay so now let's move on to el fin de semana el fin de semana fin sabes qué significa do you know what fin means i'm not sure if you have seen it maybe in movies or uh, something like that where at the end they have it el fin the end so fin significa end okay and fin de semana significa it means the weekend or the end of the week yes it literally means the end of the week in english we say the weekend el fin de semana so el fin de semana we're gonna have repite después de mí repeat after me sábado 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 y domingo 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 muy bien, vamos a repetir, repite después de mí. Let's review this, how to say the days of the week in Spanish. Lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo. The days of the week in Spanish are inspired by uh, the planets and the universe. So this started in the ancient, in ancient Rome. And so at that time, there were only the moon, the sun, and a few planets that were known to the world. And that's where the days of the week uh, came from. The names of the, na of the days of the week are actually coming from the Latin uh, root. And they're inspired by the planets. Because at the time, uh, we, the, we used to have a sense of the days based on the moon and the, and the months uh, of the year, also based on the phases of the moon and etc. So it's really interesting. So we can see here that Monday is inspired by the, the moon, Luna. Martes is from the planet, Marte. Uh, miércoles is coming from Mercurio. Jueves from Júpiter. Viernes from Venus. Sábado from Saturn o Saturno. Y domingo from the sun. And as you can see in other, can in other languages like English, um, Saturday and Sunday, they are inspired by Saturn and um, the sun. But what happened is that in Spanish, only the first uh, five days of the week remain um, this, the, retain this origin from the Latin language and from the planets. But um, with the race of religion, eventually Saturday uh, was inspired more by Sabbat, yes, from the Jewish uh, religion, which means uh, basically the day to rest, see, Día de Descanso, and Domingo was named after the day of um the the lord yes el el día del señor uh which was uh based on the resurrection of jesus so that's why now saturday and sunday in spanish is sábado 
uh, from Sabbath y Domingo from the day of the Lord. Um, so those two changed, but uh, as you can see in other countries, they still uh, retain that origin from the planets. Okay. So now I want you to practice in the comments below. Tell me, ¿Qué día es hoy? What day is it today? Yes, what day is it today? Hoy significa today. So hoy means today. And the answer, yes, that you can use to comment and to, to write a, a reply or an answer for this question is hoy es, and then insert there the day of the week. Por ejemplo, hoy es lunes, hoy es viernes, hoy es domingo. Muy bien. Let me know in the comments what day of the week it is today for you. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I will see you in the next one. Adiós, hasta luego. Hola, soy Brenda Romaniello, tu profesora de español. Bienvenidos a tu clase. Welcome to your Spanish class. My name is Brenda Romaniello and today I'm going to teach you the genitive case in Spanish. How it works and how to form it in Spanish. So what is the genitive case to start with? It's when in English, for example, we'd say this is Anna's book or Anna's house, Anna's mother, Anna's sister. That is the genitive case. When we establish belonging, yes, or um, when we establish the relationship between people and things, uh, in, in English, we're going to have that apostrophe, yes, after the person uh, that is uh, possessing, yes, or that we want to establish the possession relationship with. And then you have the apostrophe, the S, and there are, of course, other rules. And then we'll, we'll have whatever this person is um, possessing or the relation that we want to establish, yes, Anna's house. What we want to say here is that the house is Anna's, yes, Anna owns the house or the house is hers. Okay, so we are going to learn how to do this uh, relationship, how it works, the genitive case in Spanish. There are two ways to show ownership or personal or family relationships in Spanish. We can say, number one, Marta es la madre de Ana. Yes, we can say Marta is Ana's mother. Or we can also say Marta es su madre. Yes, Marta es su madre. So Marta is her mother. On the second example, the family relationship is given by the possessive adjective su, which in this case means her. So we're going to have a look at the different possessive adjectives, yes, in the case of Marta es su madre, si Marta is her mother, we're going to learn the different possessive adjectives in Spanish. To say my in Spanish, yeah, it's not correct to say the me, of me. It doesn't make sense in Spanish. It doesn't work like that. We'll have a look at that later. But to say my in Spanish, el adjetivo posesivo singular would be me. Me and plural would be mis. We'll talk about this in a minute to give you extra information on how to use these possessive adjectives. For your informal, we are going to say tú and the plural tus. We don't say de ti. Don't worry, we'll talk about this in a minute. If you want to say your formal, yes, if you want to establish that relationship, then we have to say de usted, yes, of you formal, de él o de ella, yes, so of him or of her. We'll talk about this in a minute. But if you want to use the possessive adjective, if you want to say her or his, then we say su. So su significa your formal, his and her. And sus is the, plur the plural form. So it will also mean your formal, his and her. To say our in Spanish, you can say de nosotros, de nosotras, ¿sí? of us, yes, of we, we would say the literal translation is, and the possessive adjective for our would be nuestro or nuestra, and the plural form is nuestros, nuestras. Your for vosotros, would be de vosotros, de vosotras, and the possessive adjective would be vuestro, vuestra for the singular, and vuestros, vuestras for the plural. Don't worry, we'll have a look at some examples. 
your uh, meaning from you all in Latin America, remember ustedes means you all in Latin America and vosotros means you all in Spain. So we can say de ustedes, of you all, and the possessive adjective will be su and sus, singular and plural. And their will also be the ellos, the ellas, see, of them, or the possessive adjective will also be the same as ustedes, su and sus. So in Spanish, we don't have the genitive case to establish belonging or possessions. We have to say the whole phrase using the, which means of. So in, in Spanish, we don't say uh, my uncle's son like that. We just have to say the son of my uncle. So in Spanish, we would say el hijo de mi tío, the son of my uncle, el hijo de mi tío. O Anna's house, we would have to say the house of Anna. We have to say la casa de Anna, la casa de Anna, the house of Anna. I know this is something different that we need to get used to, but if you want to do that relationship, establish that relationship of possession in Spanish, just think about the whole phrase. How would you say that in English, the weird way, yes? So the, the house of Anna or the uncle of, the son of my uncle, yes? And then you'll be able to do it and translate it into Spanish. There are some other things that we need to pay attention to. Number one is that yo and tú cambian, so they change. Uh, they are irregular after the preposition de. So if we have de plus yo, we say de mi. Okay, we don't say de yo, it's incorrect. And de tu becomes de ti, not de tu. Okay, that's also incorrect. They're irregular, we have to change them. Uh, now, the only thing is de mi and de ti are not used for possessions. So de mi and de ti are not used for possessions, like we were looking at the previous table before, we say de mi and de ti, doesn't make sense for possessions, we have to say mi, mis or tu and tus. Something important to talk about the possessive adjectives in Spanish is that they are going to match what we are possessing, they are going to match in gender and in number what we are possessing and not the person possessing, okay? Not the relationship establishing by the person that, that owns or belongs to something, okay? So let's have a look at this example. La madre de nosotros, la madre de nosotros, so here madre es femenino singular, so we have to say our, and remember we have four different options. We can say nuestro, nuestra, nuestros, nuestras. Which one would you pick for our? Remember, we're not going to match nosotros, we, okay? We're not going to say nuestros madres, okay? Nuestros madres is incorrect because here we're matching the mother, what we own, what we have the relationship with. So we have to say nuestra madre because madre is femenino and singular. Can you see this here? If we were now talking about our father, yes? El padre de nosotros, see, ¿sí? the father of us, <laughs> el padre de nosotros, as you can see, we, the possessive, the possessive people, yeah, the people that are possessing or the relationship is the same, we, we're talking about we and our father, but now we changed from madre to padre, now padre is masculino and singular, therefore we need to say our father is nuestro padre. Okay, Is that, does that make sense? Remember, we have to match what we own, not the person owning the thing or the person. Vamos a practicar, let's practice. I want you to complete the following sentences with the correct possessive adjective. So remember, in between brackets, you're gonna have the relationship of him, of her, of us, etc. And I want you to use me, tu, su, etc, etc. Respuestas. Ellos son sus primos. Ellos son sus primos. So remember, here sus is the, the plural because we are saying, we are matching it with primos. See, their, um, his cousins, the cousins is a plural and is a his, we want to say his, so we have to say sus. Yo soy su 
hija. Yo soy su hija. Número 3. Ella es nuestra abuela. Vuestra madre tiene 56 años. The next one. Tu novio es de Portugal. Su esposa es abogada. Ella es muy inteligente. The next one. Nuestras tías son amables y buenas. Nuestras tías. Mi suegra no es amable. Mi suegra. De vosotros, the next one is, vuestros padres tienen los ojos marrones. I hope you were able to use the correct possessive adjectives in these cases and remember we're matching what we're possessing in this case. Now let's do this exercise. You have to rewrite the following genitive cases in English into Spanish, like the example. So, por ejemplo, Melissa's apple, we are going to say, remember if you have to think about it, how we say it in English, the long way would be the apple of Melissa. So in Spanish would be la manzana de Melissa. Respuestas. Juan's keys, we're going to say las llaves de Juan. Ana's book, el libro de Ana. Pedro's dog, el perro de Pedro. Laura's car is going to be el coche carro de Laura. Roberto's house is going to be la casa de Roberto. Mario and Julio's cat, el gato de Mario y Julio. Daniela's plate, el plato de Daniela. Karina's friend is el amigo o la amiga de Karina. Julia's bed is la cama de Julia. Manuel's brother is el hermano de Manuel. Christian's father is el padre de Christian. Y Luis's mother is la madre de Luis. Okay, so remember, we don't have the genitive case per se like that in English. We have to say the whole entire phrase to establish the belonging. Ana's house, la casa de Ana. Ana's mother, la mamá o la madre de Ana. I really hope that you enjoyed today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Y nos vemos en la próxima clase. I will see you next class. Adiós. Hola, soy Brenda Romaniello, tu profesora de español. Hello, this is Brenda Romaniello, your Spanish teacher. Today we're going to learn how to form the singular and plural forms of the nouns, yes, los sustantivos en español, in Spanish. So the same as in English, when we have only one thing or one person, we're going to say that that's a singular thing, singular. So we call this número en español, see, ¿sí? number. When we want to talk about número, number in Spanish, we make reference if we are talking about one thing, yes, singular, or if we're talking about two or more things, plural, okay? So certain things, yes, uh, will have a plural form and a singular form. So when we talk about the singular form, el singular, in that case will be one thing of that thing. And if we talk about the plural form of it, then we are going to be referring to two or more things. Por ejemplo, mesa es singular. Yeah, it's singular. We're just saying here table. And the plural form of mesa would be mesas. Okay? And the same, for example, if we say that we're talking about árbol, el singular, árbol, si that's a tree, and el plural de árbol would be árboles, árboles, okay? So that's the plural, we, we're talking about two or more trees and then two or more tables. So how do we form the plural? Let's have a look at this table. So if the word ends in a vowel, una, una vocal en español, if the word ends in a vowel, then we're going to add an S an S at the end, okay? So, like we said before, mesa will become mesas, libro will become libros, silla will become sillas, puerta will become puertas, calle will become calles, puente will become puentes, oso will become osos. 
coche will become coches, etc. And if the word, yes, if the sustantivos, if the noun ends in a consonante, in a consonant, then we're going to add e, s after at the end to make this a plural form. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples. Sillón is going to become sillones. Televisión is going to become televisiones. Color is going to become colores. Tenedor, tenedores. Lombriz, lombrices. Nuez, nueces. Okay, so I want you to pay attention to the last two. As you can see, they ended in Z and Z, but when we put it in the plural form, we are going to transform that Z and it's going to become a C in the plural form. Okay, so whenever you have a Z in the singular form, in the plural, we're going to change that Z for a C. And then we're going to add ES at the end to form the plural. There's something else that we need to pay attention to in Spanish. So let's have a look at this phrase here. If I say gato, muy bien, gato means cat, so that's our sustantivo, our noun. noun. Now let's say that I want to say that this, this is the cat, yes? So we're going to say the cat, we're going to say in Spanish el gato, muy bien, el gato. But then say that I want to say that this is a black cat in Spanish, the black cat, right? So we're going to say el gato negro, okay? So el gato negro, remember we're going to have the adjectives after uh, what we're describing in Spanish, that's a difference in word order in Spanish. And now let's say that I want to talk about cats as in plural, yes? We're talking about two or more cats. How are we going to transform this sentence? Well, we're going to start with gato, yes? We're going to put it in the plural and we're going to say gatos, okay? Gatos. But here is, it doesn't work like in English. In English you can say the black cats and then it makes all that plural, yes, the black and the the. In Spanish, we have to basically select the plural and the masculine form of each and specific uh, parts of this sentence. The article, yes, so the, the noun, yes, cat, and then also the adjective, in this case, black. So we're going to have to say los gatos negros, okay? Los gatos negros. Muy bien. Okay, so what happens, for example, if I have gata? Now, the gata is a female cat, yes? So, gata. How are we going to form, uh, how are we going to say the female cat? We're going to say la gata. La gata, the female cat, okay? And what if this female cat is also black? How are we going to say that? La gata negra. Okay, and then if I want to say that we're talking about two or more cats, how would, do we transform that in the plural form? We would say las gatas negras. As you can see, this is um, very important in Spanish. We basically have agreement in the entire sentence. Everything has to be feminine or masculine, yes, or masculino or femenino, everything has to be singular or plural. Todo tiene que ser singular o plural. Yes, we have to match absolutely everything in a sentence in Spanish. Vamos a practicar. Now, I want you to tell me cómo se dice en español. How do you say this in Spanish? You can pause the video to think of your answer and when you're ready, just resume the video. Respuestas. Se dice mesa, silla, mesero, copa, vaso, taza de café, botella, servilleta, plato, tenedor, cuchara, cuchillo. Now, I want you to tell me how do we form the plural of all these things. Respuesta, platos, tazas, tenedores, meseros, cuchillos, mesas, vasos, 
sillas, botellas, servilletas, copas, cucharas. Muy bien, muy buen trabajo. Good job. Now let's do this exercise. You have to transform these words into their plural form. Are you ready? Let's do it. So take a few minutes to think about the answer and when you're ready, continue the video. Respuesta. Escritorio, escritorios. Vaso, vasos. Lámpara, lámparas. Almohadón, almohadones. Corazón, corazones. Sol, soles. Radiador, radiadores. Colchón, colchones. Muy bien, muy buen trabajo. So that is all for today. Muchas gracias por ver la clase y nos vemos en la próxima. Thank you so much for watching this class and I will see you in the next one. Adiós. Hola, soy Brenda Romaniello. Welcome to your Spanish class. My name is Brenda Romaniello and today I'm going to show you how to spell words in Spanish. In order to spell words in Spanish, we need to learn the, um, the alphabet in Spanish, yes? Because we're going to learn how to say each letter of the alphabet in Spanish to be able to spell words. So let's have a look at the alphabet in Spanish. We have uh, 27 letters, so let's have a look at what they are. Some of these letters have two ways, two, two names for these letters. So I'm going to show you the different names that some letters may have in Spanish as well. A, B. So for the letter B in Spanish, which is always pronounced as a B, a soft B, uh, we have two names. We can call it B o B larga. See, in certain uh, countries we call it B, and some other countries, for example, in Argentina, we say B larga. C. C. D. D. E. E. F. F. G. G. So the letter G in Spanish, we pronounce it like a, like a stronger H, yes? Yeah? So we're going to say G, G, muy bien. H, H. Remember that the H is silent in Spanish, so that includes to, uh, the name of this letter. So we say H, just pretend the H is not there. E, E. Cuidado, just be careful, don't get it confused when uh, with the English I, yes, we never say I in Spanish, this letter is called E and it's always pronounced E in Spanish as well. J, J, K, K, L, L, M, M, N, N, Ñ, Ñ, O, O, P, P, Q, Q, R, R, Something to note is that some countries, uh, for example in Colombia, they like to call R as R. S, S, T, T, U, U, V, V, O, V corta, V corta, W, Doble V, doble B, doble B, X, X, Y, Y, O, Y, 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 
Z. Z. <clears throat> so notice that when I was saying the B and the V or B corta, um, when you spell, yes, when we spell in Spanish and we make every single letter important, we'll make a distinction between B or B larga y V y V corta, yes, because we want to tell the person that is, when we are spelling, that is either the B larga or B corta, no? B corta. But as you can see, when, when we say words in Spanish with B or V, uh, they are the same. They are a very soft B, okay? So most likely, most Spanish speakers, they don't make the distinction even when we spell a word, okay? So it could be B, B larga, V, V corta, or V, V corta. The following letters are not part of the alphabet, but they have specific names that it's important to point them out. The first one is the CH, CH o CH, CH o CH. The next one is EG, EG o doble L, doble L. And the last one, R. R o doble R. I did mention before that in some in some countries uh, they do say only one R as R as well. Whenever you are spelling a word and it has that little uh, that written accent at the top, in that case we have to say con tilde. So for example, if you want to spell Mexico, then you would say that we spell M E con tilde X I e, C O Mexico. O fácil, we say that we spell F A con tilde C I -E L. Fácil. All right, let's practice again, but this time I want to show you a pronunciation guide in English so that you have a better idea of how, on how the alphabet, all these letters in Spanish, are pronounced. Let's have a look at that. Repite después de mí. Repeat after me. A, B, C, Ch, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, L, M, N, Ñ, O, P, Q, R, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, O, Y, Z. There are two questions that we can ask uh, for the spelling of a word in Spanish. We can ask, ¿Cómo se deletrea? Or, ¿Cómo se escribe? Por ejemplo, ¿Cómo se deletrea libro? How do you spell book? ¿Cómo se deletrea libro? ¿Cómo se escribe libro? How do you write libro? Yes, book. ¿Cómo se escribe libro? And then we have the different answers. So for the first question, ¿Cómo se deletrea? We are going to say, se deletrea L y B larga R O libro. And for the second option we'll say se escribe L I B larga R O libro. ¿Cómo se deletrea? Vamos a practicar. Let's practice. Tell me how we spell in Spanish the following words. I'm going to give you a few minutes to think about it and then when you're ready you can continue the video to see the answers.
Respuestas. Baño se escribe o se deletrea B, A, N, O. Baño. Cerveza se escribe o se deletrea C, E, R, B corta, E, Z, A. Vino se deletrea B corta, I, N, O. Siesta se deletrea S, I, E, S, T, A. Amigo se deletrea A, M, I, G, O. Queso se deletrea Q, U, E, S, O. Cuba se deletrea C, U, B, A. Helado se deletrea H, E, L, A, D, O. Canguro se deletrea C, A, N, G, U, R, O. Whisky se deletrea W, O, W, H, I, S, K, Y, O, Y. Apellido se deletrea A, P, E, W, L, I, D, O. Jabón se deletrea J, A, B o B larga, O con acento, N. Perro se deletrea P, E, W, -E R o W, R o R, O. Abocado se deletrea A, B corta o V, O, C, A, D, O. Elefante se deletrea E, L, E, F, A, N, T, E. Y lluvia se deletrea W, L, U, V, corta o V, I, A. Now I'm going to spell some words for you. Yes, there's going to be three words that I'm going to spell and see if you can understand them and see if you can put them together. Grab a piece of paper and a pen and then um, let's see if you can understand the spelling of these words. Número uno, the first one. M E S A. M E S A. Number two. C O C H E C O C H E And the last one which is going to be a little bit harder so pay attention is A L M O H A V A A L M O, H, A, V, A. Could you guess what word it is? Let's have a look. So the first one was M, E, S, A. That's mesa. M, E, S, A. The second word was coche. C, O, C, H, E. And the last one, A, L, M, O, H, A, V, A. Almohada, sí, that's pillow. Fantástico. ¿Cómo se deletrea tu nombre y tu apellido? How do you spell your name and your last name? Por ejemplo, mi nombre se deletrea B larga R E N D A. Brenda. Y mi apellido se deletrea R O M, A, N, I, W, L, O. Romaniello. Muy bien, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. And in the comments below, I would like you to spell your name.
okay so you don't need to put your last name if you don't want to but your name tu nombre como se escribe como se deletrea tu nombre por ejemplo mi nombre se escribe b larga r e n d a okay let's practice in the comments below thank you very much for watching and i will see you next class nos vemos en la próxima clase adiós hola soy brenda romaniello tu profesora de español welcome to your spanish class my name is brenda romaniello and today i'm going to share with you some important cultural tips about latin america which is spare change Let's start the lesson with some vocabulary about money and the different words that you can use to use for money in Spanish. Repite después de mí. So repeat after me. Efectivo. Efectivo. Efectivo significa cash. Dinero. Dinero. Dinero significa money. Billetes. Billetes. Notes. Monedas, monedas, coins, vuelto, vueltas, vuelto, vueltas, change. Cambio is also change, cambio. Centavos, centavos, cents, and this is for pesos. Centimos, centimos is the cents for euros. Tarjeta de crédito. Tarjeta de crédito, credit card. Tarjeta de débito, tarjeta de débito, a debit card. Y casa de cambio, casa de cambio is currency exchange or money exchange store. So, a common phrase that you will hear when you pay if you go to a store in Latin America and you give them a big bill for something that you're paying that doesn't cost as much as much money would be lo siento no tengo cambio I'm sorry I don't have change and this is common when you go shopping in Latin America and uh, you pay for something that is perhaps not as um, expensive if you pay with big notes or big bills, you will notice that um, small change is really hard to come by. Uh, certain stores, supermarkets and, and different retailers don't have spare change and so my recommendation for you is to always have small change in your pocket, have small change with you, just don't take big notes or a lot of money when you go out and about in your trip, if you're traveling or you're visiting or if you live there because more likely the person, uh, the, the shop assistant won't be able to give you the change that you need for uh, the item that you want to purchase. So most likely they will say that to you, to you, lo siento, no tengo cambio. And of course you may choose not to buy whatever you decided you want to buy. But in some cases, if it is an emergency or you really need or want that, that thing, that item, you might have to just pay with that big bill and just not take change, don't keep the change or, or just go without having any change in return. So if, if that's the case, what I want you to bear in mind is that you should have some spare change with you. Uh, so when you go to the Casa de Cambio, see the money exchange store, perhaps ask them to give you small change so that you have extra. Or if you go to a store and you buy something and they give you a big note uh, as part of the change, you can say, oh, can you break that change for me? Yes. Me das cambio? Puedes darme cambio? Si, can you give me some smaller change? Yes. And that includes monedas, eh, billetes, si, o um, centavos, etc. So that includes coins and notes. You might be also thinking, well, I just pay with my debit card or my credit card. Uh, just bear in mind that a, a lot of places, depending on where you go, of course, big cities and nowadays the, it's more common to be um, to have access to paying with credit card, but it is not uh, entirely the case all over the place, um, especially if you're traveling around Latin America and you go to more rural areas, bear in mind that they may not have the, uh, the, the option uh, to pay with a tarjeta de crédito, with a, with a credit card. 
the other suggestion that I want to tell you about is to take not all your money with you of course just take what you think you'll be using for the day with different coins and, and bills and notes of different amounts so that you are able to really buy anything that you want or you need for that day and if that is the case that you get pickpocketed or if you lose it or if it falls out of your pocket or if you just misplace the money then it doesn't ruin your entire holidays because you still have more money or more change uh, back in your hotel or hostel um, and it's not a big deal if you lose the money for, for that day. Perhaps if you want to ask how much something costs you can say quanto cuesta yes quanto cuesta and then if you want to make sure that they will have change it would say tienes cambio de and then whatever amount of money you have so for example let's say that you have 100 pesos 100 pesos you can say tienes cambio de 100 tienes cambio de 50 tienes cambio de 1000 see do you have change for 100 do you have change for 50 and so you ask that question before uh, you try to to pay for your item. So the difference between cambio and vuelto, they are similar, yes, they are similar, but vuelto is what people, what, when you pay something and they give you money back, yes, so that's what they return money back to you, yes, so the money that, that you have. And cambio is if they can change, yes, cambio significa change, in the sense of uh, if you can break down that amount. Yes, so it, they are used as synonyms in certain um, contexts. Yes, so for example, if you buy something from me and I, I can tell you, aquí tienes el vuelto, here is your change. Yes, el vuelto, whatever I have to return back to you from the transaction. Or I can say, aquí tienes el cambio. If you want me to keep the change, yes, uh, I would. you would say, quédate con el cambio. Muy bien, I really hope that you remember this tip when you go on, on your next trip to Latin America and that you do have change with you, que te, tienes cambio contigo to be able to enjoy your holidays to the fullest. Muchísimas gracias, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next class. Adios! Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.